Managerial accounting is the collecting and monitoring of information about a venture to make sure that it's on its way to successfully meet its goals. This course, Getting Started with Managerial Accounting, explains what managerial accountants do and why they do it. It also explains what costs are and considers different ways of measuring them. Then you explore the important managerial accounting tasks of planning, budgeting, and monitoring and evaluating operations. You also find out the differences between managerial accounting and financial accounting. Managerial accounting plays a critical role in running a business because it provides valuable information about the business to help managers make educated decisions. The process of gathering information involves, number one, analyzing costs to understand how they behave and how they will respond to different activities. Number two, planning and budgeting for the future. Number three, evaluating and controlling operations by comparing plans and budgets to actual results. After gathering information, managerial accountants then report the facts and figures to the company's managers who need this information to run the business. In the following sections, we delve into each aspect of a managerial accountant's job. Here are four managerial accounting process you need to understand. Number one, analyzing costs. Managerial accountants carefully collect information about a company's costs in order to understand how costs behave. What causes costs to increase? How can the company decrease them? Managerial accounting offers many useful tools to help understand what drives costs and how different events affect net income. Number 2. Planning and Budgeting After managers set goals and strategies for a company, managerial accountants get to work developing a realistic plan to implement these strategies and ultimately meet their goals. This budgetary process requires coordinating all of a company's functional areas, predicting sales, scheduling production, setting up purchases, planning staff levels, forecasting expenditures, and projecting cash flows. The end result is a budget that predicts what will happen during the next period, explicitly laid down in dollars and cents. Number 3. Evaluating and controlling operations. Planning is one thing, but the execution is another. Managerial accountants are responsible for continuously monitoring performance, evaluating it, and comparing it to the budget. This part of the job is a lot like taking an occasional look at the map when you're on a road trip to make sure you're on the right highway and going in the right direction. Carefully monitoring operations can help a company avert disaster. It can also help a company identify areas for improvement. Managerial accountants typically compare budget to actual results, investigating large differences or variances. Understanding the nature of these variances helps managerial accountants to identify problems that need additional management attention and also can help make future budgets more accurate. Number 4. Reporting information needed for decisions. Like other accountants, managerial accountants accumulate, classify, and report information. However, they report this information internally to the company's own decision makers rather than externally to shareholders. The information gathering function focuses on collecting information that is both useful for internal decision making and also necessary for preparing external financial statements given to investors. Accordingly, managerial accountants classify revenues and costs into many different categories for many different purposes. They then use this information to prepare reports and other information that helps managers understand how costs behave and how management decisions will impact total costs and profitability. The same accounting information system also provides information for external financial reporting. A cost is a financial sacrifice a company makes to purchase or produce something. Managers accept this necessary thing with the expectation that costs provide some kind of benefit, such as sales and net income. Costs can also be divided into product and period categories. Number 1. Product costs. The costs of making products, usually inside the factory. These costs include raw materials, labor, and overhead. After a product is made, its cost becomes an asset, inventory. Number 2. Period costs. The costs of running your business, usually outside the factory, that is, all the business's costs except its product costs. Some examples include office rent, income taxes, and advertising. Product costs and any costs that retailers must pay to purchase products ultimately become part of the cost of sales and expense on the income statement. To make decisions, managers need to understand how certain choices affect costs and profitability. Some costs behave very nicely, such that accountants can easily figure out how they relate to finished products. For example, if your factory makes leather wallets, you should have no problem figuring out exactly how much leather is necessary for each wallet. 
You can also observe and measure how long a single worker takes to sew a wallet together. When you're faced with a decision, focus on the costs that actually depend on the outcome of your decision. And ignore all other costs. When you understand how costs behave, you can then apply that understanding to develop realistic goals and strategies for the future. Knowing that fixed costs will stay fixed and that variable costs will change with volume, you can accurately predict likely costs, income, and cash flow for the coming periods. Another important planning technique is called capital budgeting. When faced with a decision to invest in long-term assets, such as a building or a piece of machinery, capital budgeting analyzes the future cash flows from the investment in order to tell decision makers whether the investment would deliver sufficient profits for the company. Most companies don't have the resources to make or buy every product they want to sell. Therefore, they must carefully choose between different opportunities to determine which ones will yield the highest profits. Managers must take special care when pricing goods. After all, if you price your product too high, customers won't buy it. If you price it too low, you sacrifice the sales revenue and profits that a higher price would have yielded. Therefore, setting prices requires a measured understanding of how costs behave. A budget is a great planning tool for reaching your goals, as long as everyone in the company actually follows it. So how can managerial accountants ensure that the organization follows its budget? By continuously monitoring actual performance and comparing the budget to what actually happens. Making sure that the company is on course, following its plan, is called control. Companies are usually made up of many parts or departments, each of which takes responsibility for different aspects of operations. Consider some typical departments, number one, purchasing department, takes responsibility for purchasing raw materials or merchandise to be resold. Number two, manufacturing department, takes responsibility for different aspects of production. Number three, quality control department, takes responsibility for ensuring that goods are produced at benchmark quality levels. Number four, sales department, takes responsibility for selling goods. Number 5, Maintenance Department, takes responsibility for keeping buildings and equipment clean and in working order. Number 6, Finance Department, takes responsibility for managing cash activities and keeping records. Managerial accounting runs in cycles of different lengths. Certain sales reports and controls may be repeated every day. Some reports may be prepared every month or each quarter. Others may be prepared just once a year. And it follows these steps. Number one, plan, establish your objectives and how you plan to achieve them. In the scientific method, the equivalent step is creating your hypothesis and prediction. Number two, do, implement the plan, you make it happen. In the scientific method, this step is the test of your hypothesis. Number three, check, measure to determine what happened. The scientific method calls this step the analysis. Number four, act, think about root causes that may explain the differences between actual and planned results. To close the cycle of improvement, act on a new plan to implement and test these root causes. This stage reflects the scientific method's commitment to evaluation and improvement.